you. And I've got another statics problem today. This is like one I did earlier where I used the method of joints. Today I'm going to solve the same problem using the method of sections. And as before, I'm going to use GFSA format. So I've got the givens right here. And as before, I've got this, this uh, little truss drawn, and I've got one meter on it. We didn't need this distance before. We're going to need it this time. I've got all the joints and all the elements labeled. Okay, the joints are labeled with circles around them, so there's one through four, and the elements have are labeled with numbers, and they have a, a line under them. So that's bar one, that's joint one, that's joint two, and so on. So we're given all that stuff, got this external force here. We need to find something. If we're going to do a structural analysis, that means we're going to find out something about the structure, find out a load on it probably. In this case, I want to find F4 bar. I want to find the force in bar four. Now, the way we did this last time with the method of, method of joints was to start here, solve for the forces at that joint, track them down to that, that joint, solve those, and eventually we got to F4. This is okay. This is, it's fine. But if you've got a really big truss going from joint to joint to joint to joint to joint across the truss, that starts to get kind of cumbersome. It starts to get old. And with all those hand calculations, it gives you lots of opportunities to make a mistake, and we don't want that. So the other way to do it is, is the method of sections. And let me show you how we're going to do this here. Let me draw just a sketch of our truss here. And I've got the force there. Now, rather than drawing the, 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 the fixed, the pin boundary conditions there, I'm going to draw reaction forces. Now, I'll label these here in a minute. But those are my reaction forces. That's a terrible arrow. There we go. Reaction forces, those are the forces that this wall, this immovable wall here, is exerting on the truss to hold it in place. Remember, statics, this is static, it's not moving. So since there's a force over here, there must be some forces over there to keep, to make it so that all the forces and all the moments sum up to zero. Okay? Well, because this structure is assumed to be rigid, okay, and that's what statics is all about, we assume it's not flexible, means I can take any one part of this structure and I can put a fictitious cut in it. I can pretend that I have cut it, like say right there, and I can figure out the forces at the cuts, what would be internal forces. So basically, if I cut it right there, which is what I want to do, I, I've basically broken into three sections, or method of sections. Well, the, the so I'll go all multimedia on, on you here. There's the the uh, section or the uh, bar I'm interested in. That's bar number four. That's the one where I want to find the forces. Well, it shows up in two of the sections. I don't. It doesn't show up in this section at all, so I don't need that one. Okay, I'm just going to erase that one. I can either analyze the forces there, there, and there to figure out what's going on with this section, or I can look at this little section down here. Well, this is by far the simpler of the two of them, so I'm going to use this one. Now, if I were to pick this one, I'd still get the right answer. It's just a little more work. Right? So that's the method of sections. I'm going to cut the, 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 L, the truss into pieces figuratively, and I'm going to figure out what forces are acting on those pieces. That, because what's inside that boundary there, all those grid points, I don't have to care. I don't need to find the forces at all those little grid points. That helps. That makes the problem simpler to solve. So the section I'm going to use looks like this. So let me give it the right angle here. That's, that's pretty, that's kind of a large angle there. So there's the force on bar four. Now, there's the force at point four. I'm going to have a force going this way. I'll call that F4X. I'll put a circle around that. And I'll call this F4Y. Okay? There you go. Those are the reaction forces that are going to be there. If I know what those are, what those two reaction forces are, I can figure out what that is, and I'm done. I will have solved the problem. Well, those are reaction forces. So, um, I've started out by, and here one here, I've done a free body diagram of the section of interest. That's this. Two, I'm going to find reaction forces. Okay, because if I know what the reaction forces are here, well, it may be there, I'm good to go. I'll find out what I need to know. Now, just a question here. There are reaction forces there. Do I care? Do I care what those are? Well, if I knew what the reaction forces there, would I be any smarter? Would it get me any closer to the final answer? No, it wouldn't. I don't really care. So it doesn't matter if I find the reaction forces at point one or not. I only need the reaction forces at point four. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, let me erase some of this stuff here. In fact, I'm actually going to get rid of this. All right. And I'm going to show you how to do reaction forces. I'm going to, well, let's just do it over here. This structure is rigid, right? Well, what if, rather than being a truss, you know, with all these little elements pinned together, I imagined it being just maybe cut out of a metal plate or something, something that's effectively rigid. Okay? So that's my thousand newtons. Okay? There's F. 4x and F4y, and there's F1x and F1y, okay? So those are my reaction forces. I don't know what's going on in there. I don't care. It's rigid, so it doesn't matter what's going on in there. This is all I need to know right now to figure out reaction forces. Well, if I sum my moments around there, around that point, point 1, okay, what I'm going to find out is F1x and F1y don't come into play because they go right through that point. There's no moment arm. F4y also goes through that point, so there's no moment arm. The only, the only force on this drawing that generates a moment, or only two anyway, are that one and that one, F4x and then my external force right here. Now, I want to pause for a second. This is the cleanest way I could think of to do this problem, and I think it's, it's, it's pretty simple. I came to this for two reasons. One is I was sitting there over my desk earlier and I was working out different ways to present it to you and this seemed to be the one that was the simplest. Also I've done this what seems like a million times so I can kind of tell where the problem's going. If you don't, if you can't do that yet, that's okay. If you take some other route to the solution that's maybe a little more circuitous than what I did, as long as you still get the right answer, that means what you've done is mathematically equivalent and that's fine. So if you pick a, a slightly more cumbersome method but still get to the right answer, don't worry about it. That's great. As you get do more of these problems, you'll get some more insight, and you'll see how to, how to come to the, the perhaps the simplest solution method a little more easily. But for right now, don't worry about it. As long as you're getting the right answer, that's all that matters. So here's what I've got. I'm going to sum the moments around point 1. Okay, and they all have to be 0. Now, I erased it before, but let's draw my positive sign convention here. Okay, there's the positive sign convention. Now, F4x is going to give me a moment that's counterclockwise. That's the positive sign convention here. So, ooh, but I need to know that length, don't I? All right, how am I going to find that length? Well, it turns out it's pretty simple. The whole truss itself, in this case, actually looks like a triangle. Okay, there, there's the triangle. And what I'm not showing is there's that, there's that extra little bar in there that I haven't drawn. Well, I don't need that right now. What I do need to know is that's 30 degrees, that's 90 degrees, and that's 60 degrees, and that's one meter right there. Okay, so there's what we've got. The distance I want to know is L. Okay, that'll be on that side. Well, basic trigonometry would say that L over one meter is going to be the tangent of 30 degrees. since that's 30 degrees, and it turns out L is 0 0.57735 meters. Now I'm working to five significant figures here, and I'll eventually round off to three. So there we go. I've got that is 0 0.57735 meters. Let me double check here. Yeah, that's right. And again, always, always, always track your units. Okay? So I've got that. Now, let me actually I'm going to need to move this to get this out of my way here. All right, so I've got a force, F4x, acting at a distance, L. L times F4x, all righty, minus, because this is now going to give me a moment in the clockwise direction, which is counter to my positive sign convention, so it must be negative. All righty, so that's one meter times one, just like that, 1,000 newtons, all right? And that all has to add up to zero, okay, because remember, this, the structure is static do a little bit of math here and what I'll find out is, oops, try this again, F4x equals, uh, let's see, 1,000 newton meters over, let's see, 0 0.57735 meters. Well, the units can cancel out just like any number or any variable, so those will cancel out. 
and F4X turns out to be 17, is it 32? Yeah. 32.05 newtons. Okay, so there's my intermediate answer. That's a good thing to know. Right? Last thing I need to know is what's the vector sum of those forces? Well, here's the force triangle at F4. Okay, there's F4X, there's F4Y, and there's F4. Now the circles here indicate these are reaction forces. Right? And again, that's 30 degrees. Well, if you do the trick, what you're going to find out is that okay, F4 equals 2,000 newtons. Okay. I want to keep the video as short as I can, so I'll skip that. You can figure it out. That's how it comes out. All right. Last thing I need to know is, using the method of sections, I'm going to draw up that last little section that we separated out, and I'm going to show you that the force in the bar equals the reaction force in the joint. Now, I think it's pretty obvious, but let's go through the drawing anyway, just to make sure okay, that we're all on the same page here. All right. So there's the bar. There's my fictitious cut there. There's... F4 in the bar, there's F4X at the joint, there's F4Y at the joint, okay? Now, the sum of all those has to be zero, and I can do this a couple ways. I can break this into X and Y components, and I can sum the forces in the X direction and the Y direction separately, or I can acknowledge that the force uh, at joint 4 goes that way. It must because this is a two-force member. It has to go up the axis of that beam. Well, that means that F4 at the joint is the force in the bar, and that's 2,000 newtons. So there we go. Last thing I'll do here for GFSA is I'll write the answer. F4 bar is 2,000 newtons. So there you go. There it is by this method of sections. And that's the same answer we got by the method of joints. I hope that helps, and I'll see you next time.